Barbara? Chapter 7. Then you really mean that I want to marry you? Yes, Miss Garden. I cannot believe that I'm the first man to have proposed to you. No, but... Barbara, are you all right? Darling. Judy, I'll do 20 letters for health and happiness, and then we'll do invitations and the diary. Oh, and please tell Nigel no more scrambled eggs. And it's the television appearance, so a very, very pretty dress. Yes, Mrs. Cotland. Escape from love? Yes, well, I will try to. The flame is love. Yes, a more contemporary approach. The river of love. So have you thought any more to my marketing strategy? With the meat. The housewife buys a jolly good read with her Sunday joint. Do you hear the butchers are terribly... Well, yes, people. People do have love in the title. Well, she writes about romance. Not it, Wrapped in cellophane, I suppose. What other man could be so persistent at the same time, so tender, question mark, so gentle and yet so masterful, question mark. She thought of how he kissed her. Aiky day, not the thing about Today, I'll talk to her today. Hello. You must be here. Ah, oh, here she is. Mark. Morning, everyone. Are we ready? Mommy, this is your new literary assistant. She'll be with you in the study, taking dictation. I love your books, Mrs. Cartlett. My mother and I, we both... When I was in hospital for tonsils, I read A Marriage Made in Heaven. And, well, it, it really cheered me up. What are you wearing? Sorry? I don't allow women to wear trousers in my house. Oh, I didn't... I'm sorry, my fault. I've Here done 25. The diary will have to wait. Come on, let's go. Yes, so the publishers are telling me there's a bit of a glut, really. So I think you can afford to slow down. Slow down? They have no manners and no marketing skills. You know what they're like. Dukes and virgins are all very nice, but it's the 1970s. Let's have sex. Romance is dead. Well, not dead, exactly. Oh, stop it. Stop fussing. Romance never dies, in. Barbara. You have made a fortune on the back of the sanctity of marriage and the blushing bride. But is that really what women want these days? Yes, of course. A career girl is just a pseudo-second-rate man who looks terrible in trousers. A real woman's ambition. But you were a career girl. You've worked all your life. In the 1920s, you were a journalist for the Daily Express. No, 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 no. A real woman's ambition is a glorious white wedding and sublime happiness of marriage. Men should work, women should be pampered and adored. Oh, sorry, Barbara. That's absolute rubbish, and you know it. But women now are liberated. No, 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 no. To advocate freedom is a, is a wicked, wicked thing. There are girls in St. Albert who are simply roaring with disease. The Zorms is a nice little cathedral to <laughs> But, Barbara, that's... Things are also so much better these days. Better? Better? Men are on strike. There's rubbish in the streets. They have this ghastly women's Look at all those young men sacrifice their lives. The English become a point of nothing. Perhaps it's time for a bit of a rethink, Mummy. Good Lord, it's Barbara Carklin. <laughs> Lord Louis, how are you? Barbara, what a surprise. I've just been to the Abbey, another memorial service. Oh, I'm sorry. We've been on television. It's wonderful to see you. How long has it been? Oh, two years. The uh, St John's Ambulance fundraiser at Shrewsbury. You know, I do believe this is serendipity, Barbara. You are precisely the person I want to talk to. Privately. Oh. Monkey glands? Who told you that? A friend. She read about it somewhere. Oh, no. Vitamin E, biostrath and honey. Just a little pick-me-up needed, really. I'm not quite... I dozed off after lunch on Tuesday, can you believe it? And insomnia. Do you suffer from insomnia? No. You see, I'm head of alternative medicine in this country. I don't suffer from things like that. Well, sometimes memories. I really can help. People do speak very highly of your knowledge. And look at you. You're a walking advertisement. Oh, thank you so much, darling. Did you hear we're opening broadlands to the public? Oh, dear. Yes, well, inflation, what can one do? Yes, well, 
One must do something. One really must. I don't intend to give up. Well, onward. I kidnapped you, Barbara. Now I must let you go. This has been wonderful. Wonderful. And during. It would be an honour to help our last real English hero. You flatter me. Oh, hot tiggity dog tiggity boom. What you do to me? It's so new to me. Until we meet again. What you do to me when you're holding me tight. Never knew that my heart could go zing that away, tingling that away. Make me sing that away. Said goodbye to my troubles. They went that away. <laughs> When we're settled in London, Barbara, I'm afraid we'll need to find you a job, otherwise... You see, now Daddy's been taken from us... Well, you, you see, the boys have to complete their education at Charterhouse, which is expensive, so... Of course. Perhaps you could learn shorthand and typing. Tony, come and help with the bags, boys. Oh, now quiet, please. I need complete concentration. From? Uh, from... Uh, the dress was completely as she had imagined and fitted her like a glove. Suddenly, Thurston's arms were round her and he held her very close. You look beautiful in white, he said. I'm going to be the most wonderful, wonderful wife, she breathed. Quiet! Sorry about her. I'm going to be the most wonderful, wonderful wife. Are you shocked that I should love you so overwhelmingly? And that when you touch me, it should excite me so wildly? He crushed her to him, kissing her with a desire that could not be repressed. A passion, like a fire leaping into flame as she responded to it. Is there a... I mean, is there something wrong? No. You seem... Maybe you could, uh... Maybe you should, uh... uh. Why don't you say something? I don't know you not to have something to say. I'm ready! <laughs> well, I'm a liner. <laughs> An ocean-going liner. <laughs> With real portholes and a chimney. <laughs> well, how do I look? Marvellous. Very good, B. Well... Slightly ridiculous. Oh, you're rotten, Brother Ronald. It's fun. It's a charity ball at the Albert Hall. <laughs> I look wonderful. And I'm staging the tableau. Oh, well done. Oh, thank you, Mummy. It's called Britain and Her Industries, and I'm shipping. Oh, by Countess of Scarsdale is up in arms because she doesn't want to appear at the Albert Hall as go. <laughs> but then I said, well, wool isn't going to be terrifically flattering either. <laughs> You'll be so hot. Darling... Going to the club. But Saki. Oh. Oh, Mummy, I'm so sorry. This is Hugh, Saki's cousin. Sorry. Shrapnel. At Passchendaele. My husband was killed at... Ronald, perhaps... Come on, Hugh, old man. Let's give you a glass of water. Oh, a present for me. Thank you so much, darling. <coughs> Mummy! Get me out of this! A 
beg your pardon? You got me out of the engagement with Pingo and the one without him and he threatened to shoot himself. Please, Mummy, will you get me out of this? But Barbara, this, this is all you ever want? No. No, you really don't understand. It's, it, it's really not like you and Daddy. Barbara, you're married in the eyes of God and that's the end of the story. Life is disappointing. One doesn't make a fuss about it. And happiness will come. You've only been married a year. Ronald, darling, how's you? Better. You're right, Bea. She's fine. Oh, my goodness! Oh, my God, I've cocktails in an hour and I'm still dressed as a boat. Um, ah. Yes, 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 you need it. Just don't spend it all on books about dead prime ministers. Oh, Mummy, did I tell you? The tats that want to photograph my interiors next week. Isn't that exciting? Please be a boy. Please be a boy. It will be a boy. Barbara. 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 Oh, come on, this is ridiculous. Come, let me in. Barbara. 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 She has eczema. No one marries a girl with eczema. <coughs> no, you're pulling too tight. Careful. Sorry, madam. I... No, it's it's not tight enough. What are you doing? Yes, that one. And the silver shoes. Possible for a woman with those red highlights in her hair not to have the fires of passion somewhere within her, dormant, unawakened. It's him, he's here. Everybody, go away. Well, frankly, there was an incident. The bloody sword of state at the opening of Parliament. Not very heavy. The television lights were hot, I suppose, but suddenly. I saw the floor coming up toward me in waves. Darling. The Queen said she hurried her speech to give me a fighting chance. Anne had her hands ready to catch me. Can you imagine a bloody thing? You wouldn't fall. I didn't fall. You look magnificent. You watched it? Of course. You didn't notice anything? No. Right. Here we are. My goodness, a cornucopia. Now, I have prepared a package. I did the same for Mrs. Gandy. A thousand milligrams of vitamin E, the love, life and sex vitamin. The magic pill. Vitamin A, complete health crafts. Ginseng for rejuvenation. Dr. Kissinger takes that. And so did the astronauts. And my brain pill. Now... Do they make you snatch a white bread sandwich at luncheon? I do know the pressure of your itinerary, Dickie. Oh, I have a jolly good breakfast, Bob. Because you are what you eat, don't you see? So many young men today, and I've made an extensive study, they cannot satisfy their young wives in bed. Really? Oh, isn't it shocking? They're impotent due to an improper diet, pesticides, and the fact that women simply won't peel potatoes anymore. Well, not me. They feed me terribly well. Oh, of course not you, darling. No, but... The rest of England is facing a crisis in virility, however. Something really must be done. Anyway, it's all written down. Splendid. Mm. I shall rattle. Um, you know, I, I don't think I have any cash on me. Oh, darling, don't be silly. You are vital to the nation. I shall send you my osteopath, too. Now, last but not least, the elixir of life. Honey. I just don't want to go like Winston. Oh, no. That was terrible. 
Well, I won't let you. Just look at me. I work six hours on the trot. I answer 10,000 letters and write 15 books a year. They don't want me to, but this year I'm going to write 20. I'm quite determined. A romance factory. In times of strife, people need happiness and hope, and I can provide it. Excuse me, Lord McBatten. Madam, the Royal Philharmonic want you to choose your top ten love songs, and the Daily Mail would like a comment on prostitution. Later. One is constantly being asked to do these little things. Do carry on. Write a book for me, Barbara. For you? Well, for one of my charities. United World Colleges. Oh, yes. Yes. My period goes from Regency, because before that men wore wigs, which is totally unsuitable. Regency to 1914. I always end at the war. Something naval, perhaps. Yes. Yes. Oh, Dickie, I really think we should write this together. Oh, no, Barbara, it's not really my nephew. Oh, but we'd have such fun. The regulations, the uniforms. Yes, well, people do often get that sort of thing wrong. Oh, we won't. I've had an idea. Let's ring the publishers. Oh, jolly good. Do you hear ideas working out well? And sack them. And then ring Bantams and offer them ten books next year. Ten? And then ring Corgis and offer them ten books. Well, that's twenty. That's twenty books in a year. I know. That's six thousand dollars a day, Mrs. Carton. I know. Helen, I've been thinking. I could sing the songs for the Philharmonic. Sing? No, mother, I think they just want you to choose the songs. No, but I could sing them. You can't actually sing, Mummy. Yoga, darling. And I shall need another television appearance. Are you sure that's a good idea? Why not? That's the heart you've been on. Oh, who else is being interviewed? Danny LaRue. Uh... Oh, Danny LaRue? No, they won't be able to tell us apart. No, find something else, something more serious. And no other women. a good mixer straight away and rain who sits in a nursery window on her rocking horse is already the perfect hostess her engagement diary must be almost as full as her mother's well done darling thank god you're not a plain dumpy little girl a fine romance, my friend. This is, we should be like a couple of hot tomatoes. But you're as cold as yesterday's mashed potatoes. Are you going to the club, darling? I thought I might just pop in. I shouldn't be too late. Jolly good. A fine romance, you won't. You're just as hard to no. land as the music fan. I haven't got a chance. Hello, Donald. How was your day? What are you doing here? Well, uh, I've come to do some work. I'm helping to correct a novel. It's ten o'clock. Is it? The food riots on Oxford Street. The Tories don't get back near the election. England's lost. We'll all pack up and go to the Dominions. Have you paid your rent? I think so. Thanks for the check. Let me see visit the office. Sorry, I haven't even managed to finish. Sweet punishment. Oh, come on. <coughs> Work. It's terrific you've taken up writing again, B. Yes. B, why don't you write a serious book? 
I mean, I'm terribly good at all this. But... I just... I just can't get him to do what I want, Ronald. It's because of the drink. When, when he proposed. I get so low when I'm ill, I, I just don't think. You didn't love him. And of course I loved him. He was terribly handsome. And a Scot. I thought he was strong and silent and experienced. I'm rich. I was living above a knitwear shop with Mummy and a spinster. I couldn't afford to be a fool. All the good men got killed. Nonetheless, I still got 48 proposals. Did you know that? He's a nut, actually. Anyway. He's having an affair. No. I mean, that's fine. I'm ter terribly busy, and... Maybe I... Maybe I didn't... What do you want me to do? Shall I kill him in a duel? <laughs> I may divorce him. We'd get a very comfortable settlement. Barbara? What? Hugh said he cried all the time at school. He was bullied because he... he put his shoes on the wrong feet. <laughs> In his pocket. Thank you, Ronald said. Well, to weigh your fee is truly... No, 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 no. The rich and privileged think they can bully a defenseless young woman and buy justice. What price freedom? Hmm? And of course, Ron is like one of the family. Lovely weekend walks and political discussions. We do so believe in him. Yes, people do. Uh, he can get terribly angry sometimes, but I think if that were controlled and... And channeled, well. No. Yes, well, um, I'm quite happy to agree to a divorce. He can run away with his mousy Mrs. Major Helen Curtis. But if he thinks he can have custody of Rain, he's quite mad. Darling B. Yes? I'm afraid he's not going to do the honourable thing. Your husband has decided he can't assume. He wants custody of his daughter. No. He's accusing you of adultery. Me? With whom? With his cousin. You. <laughs> With you? The servants say he's always in your bedroom, that you uh, call him darling and kiss him. Well, yes. I mean, I work in my bedroom. I entertain in there. I call all my friends darling and kiss them. He gives you presents. 
A dress for Ascot and a diamond bracelet? Oh, yes. He gives me presents because he's in love with me. <coughs> no, please. Humiliating me. Oh, I'm losing everything, Ronald. We have to go back into court now. What was he? There was something different in his touch, something strong and silent in his demeanor. She felt so weak, but so safe. But safer. Safer than she'd ever felt before. Ever felt before. After the humiliation and troubles of the last few days, he seemed to know exactly what to do. Tarinia had been waiting oh so very long. Waiting and hoping. Look, madam, here he is. He's so distinguished, isn't he? Barbara. In two days, I met the King and Queen of Sweden, installed the local May Queen, had a reunion dinner for the Kelly and spent the night at Windsor. Five speeches. That's more like it. I got my zip back, Barbara. Let's make romance. A title. Love at the helm. What do you think? Splendid. Good. I've had another look at a couple of your books, just to keep up with the Oh, pen. darling, you read one. You've read them all. It's just a formula. Obviously. It might be sentimental guff to you and me, Barbara, but it hits the spot commercially, doesn't it? You are one very clever operator. Oh, no, dear, I'm not clever. It certainly sells. Now, listen. Villain drinks, gambles, ruins the family estate of name, hero... Often a cousin rescues and falls in love with a victim heroine and gets the old house back. Have I got it? Well, it's not really quite that simple. The heroine heals. She nurses him back to health. I mean, he may fall down a cliff or get mauled by a lion. Or in our case, perhaps, she saves his leg from amputation. Thank you. That sounds good. Denzel, Captain Denzel. Denzel. Conrad? One gets through so many names... What we have to work on is historical accuracy and a little bit of reality. There are, forgive me, some glaring mistakes in many of your other books. We agreed 1815. Then there were over 600 ships in commission, uh, manned by 130,127 men. Good, good. So, a sea captain, Conrad Horn takes an attractive passenger, Dolores, to the West Indies, fights a few sea battles, and falls in love. I suppose he's handsome. Oh, yes. All my heroes are handsome. And often very good for the twelve ball. And then I fall in love with them. The West Indies. We were at war with France. <laughs> Tequila! Oh, no, it must be Antigua. My son Glenn and I went there last year, and it's enthralling. Barbara, it's 1815. Oh, darling, we really don't want to get too hung up on specifics. It blocks spontaneity. My plots come from God. I say a little prayer and off I go. No, no, Barbara, you wanted historical truth. You see, life is difficult for my ladies. They have fat husbands, they have children with squints, they have an unending pile of washing. They don't necessarily need to know how many frigates Napoleon had. All right, but that doesn't mean we have to lie. I know, of course not. But, I mean, even in factual books about history, your marvellous book about Indian partition, for example, inaccuracies do creep in. When we made In Which We Serve, Noel demanded absolute accuracy. You asked me to advise you. You want a naval theme. I was first sea lord, for goodness sake. You can't have the Battle of Trafalgar happening in Jamaica. But was Noel Coward ever translated into Punjabi? Or Hebrew or Japanese? No. Darling, this is my 505th book, and I'm here to tell you now, no one ever wants to know what really happened. It's too unpleasant. 
The only thing that really matters is that love conquers all. Ow! I've had quite enough of this. Ow, ow! Now there's only a few more, darling. Please. Please, darling, sit still. Aren't you going out for luncheon, Barbara? Well, Harry Carstairs was kind enough. No. No, I haven't had an invitation today. But that doesn't mean to say that we don't make the best of ourselves, does it, Grandma? No. We must remember who we are and look to our manners and God will provide. Remember always to be jolly good value. Because if one isn't rich, beautiful or titled, one must always be jolly good value. You won the case. You have custody of your lovely daughter and an adequate settlement. £500 a year? It was all debts. No. But of course, I'm very lucky. It's all so... It's disgraceful, all of it. I'm never going to rely on a man for money again. If you are ever lucky enough, ever lucky enough to be asked to marry again... I think the best thing to do, Mummy, is to pretend it never happened. Grandma? Yes? Mummy said to foresee. <laughs> Thank you, Rain. No one likes a clever girl. Mum has found me a Mayfair address. Oh, it's tiny, of course. Oh, thank goodness. Major Beaumont Thomas isn't seeking re-election at Kings Norton. Birmingham, Kings Norton? That's our seat. That's the Cotland seat. Well, it isn't our seat. Our brother Tony lives there, and there's a road called Cartland Road. It's your seat, Ronald. Put your name forward. Don't be silly, B. I know with every fibre of my being that this is the right thing to do for us. For England. B, I know how hard and horrible it's been. Oh, I, I really don't know what you're talking about. This... This is meant... I'm far too young. And how on earth would I afford it? Mum is still paying my bills. I'll get you the money. You have no money. Faith has never let you down. I will get you the money. It would cost at least a thousand pounds. I mean, at least. Because I would have to be independent. I couldn't be a party hack to central office. Put your name forward. You're going to be prime minister. <laughs> well, that's what you always dreamt of, isn't it? I'm going to make it happen. We worked it together at the Daily Express a few years ago, and, well, I was just wondering if, um... Well, if you were looking for anyone at all, well, um, what about spiritual bankruptcy? I was a gothic columnist. Yes, well, no, but, um, since then I have published three novels. S something about women and fashion. Two guineas. Oh, that's perfect. It's not easy to... Always attractive. It requires determination and perseverance. Damn. It's not easy always to. That's terrible. Ronald. Like that. Okay, release your shoulders, Ronald. Release your shoulders. I think they're slightly tense. I can feel it. Freedom is open in India. Lord Louis Mountbatten, last Viceroy of India. With Lady Mountbatten, he enters Government House for the ceremonies which may oh, his hand dress. before fled dominion. Next to arrive is Mohammed Ali Jinnah, first Governor General. As his final official... I act, lost time. Lord Louis delivers a message from oh, the Dickie. As Lady Mountbatten and Gina's sister... Fatima I remember the day she died. No, years before. I lost her years before. 
How long is it, do you think, before one moves on to the next plane after death? Do you know? The next plane? The next dimension, before one is reincarnated. I used to feel my brother, Ronald, so close by me. He had so much faith and energy. I used to see him, Dicky. And now I don't. And it frightens me. Come on, Barbara, it's so awful to be idle. We have so much to do. Yes, we have. We do, we really do. Come to the Soviet Embassy with me. Help with the taunt. No need to dress up too much. They're communists, remember. Tea? Yeah, yeah, please. On the bench. 